Hi everyone, good Tuesday afternoon and welcome to Go Local Live. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for joining in for the news and politics show today. I'd like to welcome my first guest, Matt Resnick with the CBD Center of Rhode Island in Johnston. Matt, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us, Kate. Right Super excited to be here. on the heels of the grand opening of what you say is the first dedicated CBD retail here in Rhode Island. Correct. Correct. And we're super excited. We've been open since Friday and the response has been unbelievable. Before we go too much further, I wanted to give you a little bit <laughs> of our CBD swag. Okay. So you can wrap us out there. CBD swag. Thank you so much for bringing us in. Um, I want you to tell us a little bit about Soup to Nuts when you decided this is what I want to go into for a business model. How long ago did you know that you wanted to open up a CBD shop here in Rhode Island? Well, it's been a good amount of time in the making, Kate. Over the last, I'd say, six to eight months, okay. myself and my partner, as well as our, kind of we call it our research and development side of things, we have been actively sampling and independently testing a lot of different products, hundreds of different product lines out there. And what we started seeing was something that was a little bit scary. We saw a discrepancy between testing that was being given to us mm. and testing that we were doing on our own. Wow. Luckily, there's a lot of local companies that are very good at what they do, one of which is East Coast Labs, okay. which we have aligned with, and we know we're getting our test results accurately. So we know what we're selling somebody's in the bottle is actually in the bottle. So East Coast, East Coast Labs that you're working with, tell us a little bit of what's offered at the store. If someone goes to Johnston, what are they going to find? So when somebody comes to our, cell, our store, first and foremost, they're going to find a fully welcoming, very friendly staff. Okay. Our staff is super trained and knowledgeable to the point that they can walk even a rookie, never used CBD products before, through our store, through every product, and identify if there are products that could potentially help them. Okay. Everybody's different. Mm. We can't say there's one product for everybody. I wish we could. So what I recommend is coming in, pick our brain a little bit, sit down and let's see if we have something that's a fit for you. And my, chance, my bet is that we probably do. So what was the uh, response this weekend from the store opening on Friday to here we are Tuesday in studio? Are you getting a lot of folks to the door? It's been an unbelievable response, as I said before. The community has welcomed us with open arms. One of the biggest things that's welcomed us with open arms is the medical practice that's in our building. Ah. We have a neurology practice upstairs. Dr. Morano, who runs the neurology practice, has welcomed us. He stands by our product line. Every product that's on our shelves, our families, our friends induce, we are perfectly fine having whoever walks in our store ask us to see the tests. Let's show it to you. Let's go through what's in the products. The medical side of things that Dr. Morano has brought to us in our consultations as far as product specific and ailment specific things, mm. it's just gone so above and beyond to the point that the welcome wagon's there, we're on. So is there going to continue to be a market for specific CBD-specific products? I mean, there's a lot of talk, obviously, what's being offered right up to the border in Massachusetts with full-scale legalization of marijuana, but that has THC. So will there continue to be that market for simply CBD, non-THC products? Absolutely. Not everybody is looking to get high, okay? What we find when people are coming into our store recently, and we're obviously only a few days in, so our sample size may not be as large as we'd like. However, we found a lot of people that have come in saying, so happy to be able to come into a friendly establishment where I don't have to feel awkward as though I'm around somebody that's not looking for medicinal value within the plant. Mm. As far as all the CBD products that are out there, they're endless, they're countless. You name it, there's a CBD product for it. And you talk about the CBD products Go Local had written a piece not too long ago about the proliferation, we've talked about this, um, for commercial use, you see it from anywhere from the smoothie joint here downtown across the way over to the oyster bar down at 210. If folks are out and about, and obviously you spell specifically the products in your store, but they see something on the menu and whether they've maybe used CBD before or they haven't, what should they be asking and should they be similarly having someone engaging them in that conversation about the product that they're looking to, uh, looking to try? Knowing who you're getting the product from is huge. Okay, we have something that we like to say. It's called confidence in your consumption. Mm -hmm. And we offer that. Not many places out there can say that they've gone to the extent where we have, we don't have to go and test these products on our own. However, we have. The manufacturers supply their tests. 
most companies just go off that. We go above and beyond to say, hey, whether or not they're telling us this is what it is, mm. we're going to make sure this is what it is before you're actually going to induce it. And that goes such a long way. So you've got the retail location in Johnson again just opening up. What do you foresee for the future? You did mention some retail operations, uh, uh, some otherwise some more commercial uses interested in partnering with you. I mean, what's, what's the future for the CBD Center? I mean, the sky's the limit. As far as the future goes, we're going to see exactly what the future brings on the commercialized side of things. We're certainly not a wholesaler. We don't produce products or anything like that. All of the products that we have in our store, what we're really looking to take apart first and foremost is make sure our local community is aware of the products. Mm. One by one is what we're hoping to slowly educate and slowly win our local community over and kind of show them what the true powers of this you know, natural compound are. And of course, one of the things that does come up with people who are curious to know, CBD is perfectly legal. Yes. And right now we did see, we talked a little bit about the federal framework because you have on one hand a declassification of the substance by lieu of the recent farm bill that was passed. But now we have the FDA looking to see how they play into this as well with it being in food and health products and the potential for regulations, which you say the industry is looking for. But now with the changeover at the head of the FDA, it looks like it could be taking a little while. 100% accurate. So the CBD industry is screaming for regulation. We want to be told these are the rules and the regulations. This is what you need to do. Mm. And everybody's going to abide by them. Instead, as of January 1 with the Agricultural Improvement Act of 2018, a.k.a. the Farm Bill, was enacted January 1. Taking hemp away from the DEA as a Schedule One substance, now making it a farm product under the USDA. Great, everything's perfect. However, the FDA hasn't had their time yet to do their clinicals and their trials. Because of that, they haven't issued statements about inducing this product into food, beverages, mm. whatever it is. So it's a little bit of a gray area. Locally here in the state of Rhode Island, we're not under the same scrutiny necessarily as somebody that's in New York is right now. Mm -hmm. New York has pulled CBD products away from the bars and away from the restaurants. However, the weird part what happened was when they did this, they came in and told them they can't sell them anymore. They didn't take the products away. They didn't do anything with them. <laughs> They're not illegal. Yeah. Here's your product. You can't sell it. I know you have it. You can't put it in any food. You can't do this until the FDA truly gives some type of guidance, which was supposed to be next month with Commissioner Gottlieb's resignation. We don't know if that's going to happen or not. We're hoping it does, but we'll see once we get some new powers that do. Any concern that a similar style of regulation that New York is currently embarking on could take place here in Rhode Island? You know, there's always a concern, of course, being in this industry. Do I think it's truly warranted and valid? I really don't. I think a lot of our legislators within our local government, we've already spoken with. We've spoken directly to all of the departments out there, Department of Health, Department of Business Regulations, everybody involved. We are full transparency. We're not trying to stay in a gray area. We're sitting here saying, this is what we do. We're doing it the right way. We are not a compassion center, a medical marijuana distributor. You don't need a card to come into our store. We're there to help. We're there to utilize the medicinal compound within the plant. We're not looking for anybody to take on any type of psychoactive thing that they really don't want. Well, the CBD Center of Rhode Island, again, just opening up on Friday in Johnston. We'll provide a link to the store if you want to learn more. I just want to thank Matt Resnick for coming in to tell us thank a little bit more about me. it. And don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back here with our next guest here on Go Local Live.
Hi everyone, welcome back to Go Local Live. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for tuning in this Tuesday afternoon. I'd like to thank Matt Resnick coming in with the CBD Center of Rhode Island. And I'd like to welcome a familiar face, Denny DeJesus. Thank you for coming back in. Thanks, Kate. You're going to tell folks a little bit about an event coming up that is sure to be, uh, not to be missed, a 24-hour <laughs> plunge. So this is to support the Special Olympics of Rhode Island. And... You might have heard of plunges that people do for raising money that you go in and you go out. Mm -hmm. You go in and you go out. You go in and you go out. Yeah. You go in. So tell folks, tell viewers, Denny, what well, this is all about. Yeah. Well, it's a 24-hour plunge. It's a group of men and women who committed to the mission and vision of Special Olympics Rhode Island who are going to plunge every hour on the hour for 24 hours beginning at 1 o'clock on March 23rd, which is a Saturday, and they will conclude on March 24th, Sunday at 12 noon. So here's the trick, Kate. you got to go under. <laughs> you just can't walk in and walk out. When you do a plunge, you, are plunging. you have to go under the water and come back out. So we're talking about 25 extremely brave men and women who uh, truly believe in our mission, want to support the great athletes of Special Olympics Rhode Island, and uh, hope to raise about $100,000. Well, I'll tell you again, that 24 hours, every hour on the hour, I mean, really showing their commitment to Special Olympics, mm -hmm. not to take away from other plunges, but you know, when you go to your friends and your coworkers and you say, hey guys, I'm not just doing this once, I'm yeah. doing it 24 times, right. do you think that that really helps them? They're like, oh, they are certainly dedicated. I will, yeah. I will give you maybe a little <laughs> more because I cannot believe that you are, you are actually doing this. <laughs> well, you know something, what we found is that Rhode Islanders are so generous and so supportive. And uh, these people go out and they start a good six months in advance. They have dinners, they have macaroni dinners. I'm going to one of Matunic Oyster Bar on Thursday night, a fundraiser. They're trying to raise money and, and they're doing it all for our athletes. So I commend them for their spirit and uh, I just wish them all the best. You know, it's, I think the toughest part they say is about two, three, four o'clock in the morning when you, uh, you know, sleep deprivation sets in, you're tired, but you're still going in the water and there's no end at sight at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, but they, they say when the sun comes up on Sunday morning, they're revitalized and they feel good and they're looking forward to the end of it. They get to the, see the light at the end of the tunnel and maybe yes. uh, some warm clothes and a, and a hot location. There's so many supporters that help put this on as well. This mm -hmm. is not just the plungers out there. This takes a village oh, of yeah. Food and shelter. I, I hear there's a hot tub too. There's a hot tub. Yep, there's a hot tub that, that they have access to. There's two sheds that are heated, uh, a TV inside. There's plenty of food. People come down all hours of the night to spend time with them, which is wonderful. But there's also two other plunges going on. I don't know if you're aware of that. There's a high school plunge on Saturday at 12 noon, also at Salty Bryant, and Torch Run Police Fire Correction Offices on Sunday at 12 noon. So that helps bookend it, I guess, right. for the, the, the plungers who right. are doing the full plunge. Because this is now, I believe, is this year four? Well, we go back about five or six years. I this remember Elwood Johnson, the chief of Richmond. And that's who State started Trooper. it, correct? He started it. Okay. He was the, he His did lone it, <laughs> self. He did it all alone uh, at, um, it was at Goddard Park in East, in East Greenwich. He did it all by himself. And then gradually we picked up a few more and a few more and a few more. And now we're at 21. Now, does he have a, a special guest joining him this year, did I hear? I haven't heard that. I, oh. Somebody who's plunging, I believe, has a family member who's going to be doing it with them as well. Okay. So me in on that one. I, <laughs> I will haven't have heard. to fill you. Know. Because I got a little bit of the skinny when Go Local Prov was at TF Green Airport just last week, mm -hmm. sending off the team from Rhode Island to the World Games. And... I'll tell you, the excitement that you felt yeah. uh, to represent Rhode Island, to represent the U.S., you said no competition has not begun yet over mm -hmm. there, correct? March 14th, so we're two days away, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to be following them closely. If there's yeah. anything to report from Abu Dhabi and the team that's over yeah. there, we certainly will. And if you want to learn more about this 24-hour plunge, how to support it and how to support Special Olympics of Rhode Island, which is looking to reach a $100,000 fundraising goal from this event alone, 24 hours. Yeah. That is uh, quite, again, the, the commitment by those mm -hmm. folks who want to support Special Olympics of Rhode Island. So want to commend all of the plungers 
who might be watching this. And again, if you know them, know that they are really dedicating their weekend oh, yeah. <laughs> to this event and the Special Olympics. So, Denny, thank you so much for Thanks, taking Kate. the time for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you. And don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with our last guest here at Go Local Live. Hi everyone, welcome back to Go Local Live. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for tuning in this Tuesday afternoon. We'd like to thank Matt Resnick with the CBD Center of Rhode Island and Denny DeJesus with the Special Olympics of Rhode Island for coming in. And we'd like to thank a familiar face, Karen Dalton with the Dare to Dream Ranch. Thank you. I appreciate it because you are getting busy for a big fundraiser here we at the are. end of the month. The yes. Laugh and Rock the Night Away event at the Elks Lodge in West Warwick on March 29th. Comedy by Veterans, for veterans, families, friends, supporters, and live music. On a scale of 1 to 10, how fun is this event going to be? It's going to be a 10. <laughs> it is definitely going to be a 10. There's nothing better than the therapy of laughter and music, right? So to make you like just forget about everything that's going on and uh, really have a good time. So tell us a little bit about the comedians and about the music that people can expect. So the comedians are both veterans. Um, so we're, you know, they'll know the demographic that we're working with and they are very passionate about why they're working with, this, with us and helping us with our mission to help veterans that may be struggling with post-traumatic stress, anxiety, depression, military sexual trauma, mild traumatic brain injury, um, and now stroke recovery. I have a, a client that comes once a week that um, is recovering from a stroke. Now, we've had you on before and you've told folks about the ranch, but maybe for viewers who might be watching for the first time, tell us a little bit about the impetus for the ranch, and I want to get an update as to where things are at now. Sure, sure. So, uh, Dangerine Ranch is a 501c3 nonprofit that offers alternative therapy programs for our service members, veterans, and their families uh, that may be struggling with post-traumatic stress, anxiety, depression, military sexual trauma, mild traumatic brain injury, and now stroke recovery. Um, we use equine therapy. So it's groundwork exercises to help them with those. Uh, work on nonverbal communication, trust, relationship skill building, leadership, things like that. Um, and then we also do woodworking. We have fly tying and fly fishing. Lots of different programs out there because not everything works for everyone. Now, how many horses currently are at the ranch? Because I saw a video of kind of a chubby one kind of <laughs> making his way around. Oh, yes. That, that is our new one. Um, he actually came from a farm in upstate New York where he was a, um, a pole horse, so he, he was used strong. for farming, yes. so he's very strong, um, and he, <laughs> the owner liked to keep the, his horses round. So he is pleasantly round, um, <laughs> but he's also pleasantly slow, or not pleasantly for me, but he, 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 maybe for somebody. Um, so we are currently exercising him to help him uh, increase his energy. <laughs> but he's a, um, we have six horses, so he's a, Where is his episode? yeah, he's a gorgeous Percheron Andalusian cross. He's absolutely stunning horse. And I mean, there's been so much research um, and just documentation of 
horses and therapy yes. and the interaction that what horses can pick up on and right. kind of be there for that person. Talk a little bit about that special bond. So a horse, yeah, a horse is a hypervigilant fight or flight animal, um, and so they they can really sense your energy within four feet. Uh, so they know if you're happy, they know if you're sad, they know if you're angry, and they will instantaneously react and mirror that back to you. So it helps people to really check in and say, what am I doing that I need to change so that I can build this relationship with this horse that I'm really looking for. And how important is this fundraiser, Karen, again, to support the operations of the Dare to Dream Ranch? Well, uh, because it is for our military and their families, we offer everything for free. Um, and as you know, Horses and farming and all of that is not free. So uh, even though our volunteers uh, that do all the different programs donate their time, including myself with the equine program, we have to feed our horses, we have to pay our insurance and everything else. So this is huge for us to be able to take care of our animals, to feed them. A lot of the animal horses that we have are rescues. Um, so to be able to afford that, we have to do fundraisers like this so we wouldn't be able to do these programs at all. And this really puts the fun in fundraisers because, you know, sometimes in some other, you know, political aspects there might not be that huge fun component. This is fun. It is fun. <laughs> it is fun. I have people that come out there and say just the drive out to Foster is, is therapy itself <laughs> because it's so peaceful. Beautiful. Um, right in the middle of the woods and uh, very quiet and, and um, serene. It is right next to the woods. I did like the happy ending for the story of one of the dogs at the ranch yes. deciding to take a little walkabout, if you will, for a few hours. For a few were... hours, yes. Just after this last storm where we had 17 inches of snow and I was trudging through the snow to try and find it, falling through the, the streams that were underneath the snow and yes, and then I and turned around and back. come back and, and the dog was there greeting me at the same time that I was coming back <laughs> from, yes, it was great. So <laughs> as you said, therapeutic just going out to foster itself, the six horses, dogs, and a lot of support for, again, veterans and their families. Yes. Because how important is it as a family member of a military family to have that support structure as well? Well, as General Callahan had said once at one of the Yellow Ribbon events was, you volunteer. If you're in the National Guard, you volunteer, but your family was drafted. So it, the family, is, they serve too. They're part of that. And if you have somebody that has PTSD, anxiety, depression, that family is going through those symptoms and, and having to deal with the, the side effects of that. So it's, it's very important for them to get therapy as well. And so after this big event on March 29th, what are we looking ahead to in 2019 for the ranch? <sighs> We are looking to expand our vegetable garden. So last year we started being able to bring the vegetables to the homeless trailer um, at the Providence VA Medical Center. So being able to provide healthy, um, sustainable food for, for people at need, uh, for our veterans and their families at need. Uh, we're, so we're expanding that. So we're expanding our botanical garden. We are increasing our retreats. So last year we had our first week-long retreat. We had a um, a veteran from Georgia that stayed with us for a week, and this year we're looking to increase that to eight veterans. Wow, okay, serve more. I mean, the, the population of who you could serve must be just overwhelming. Well, it is. I mean, you have the huge demographic of age-wise from, I've my youngest client um, was four, and his mom was deployed, and then they came back, and then went through a divorce, and. You know, the, the depression and the anxiety in the, of that transition, you know, mom was gone and now dad's not here and then mom's gone again. And so it's very important for the children to be able to be part of that and, and you know, be able to be there with the animals and be at peace, even if it's just for an hour or two. Well, again, appreciate your taking the time to come into Providence. Thank I you. know it's not always the easiest. To tell folks about what's taking place on March 29th at the Elks Lodge in West Warwick, the Laugh and Rock the Night Away to benefit the Dare to Dream Ranch. Thank Karen you. Dalton, thank you so much for coming thank in. You. I appreciate your watching this afternoon here on Go Local Live. Of course, tomorrow will be Laura Afonso at 3 o'clock with more live content here. But in the meantime, be sure to go localprov.com and find us on Facebook. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel.